I met a kid of 15. He lost all his family. His brothers and sisters and his mother and father. Uh, Minister, um, I, I had uh, I, um, planned to uh, say something else uh, than I'm going to say because you've... Uh, uh, I've, I actually find it difficult um, not to run down across the chamber, Minister. Uh, I, I find it really upsetting um, listening to you. Um, you said we need to prevent conflicts from starting. Minister, how in God's name can you say that? You are allowing Shannon to be used as a US military airbase. We are giving permits for munitions and armed troops to come through Ireland on the way to war fronts. I mean, how can you say that we're interested in preventing the conflict from starting? That's too bad. You, you say that we want to tackle, that the Turkey deal is tackling the business end of the problems, that we're going to stop the smugglers. What planet are you living on? We're feeding the smugglers. Turkey is a disaster. The Turkey deal is nonsense. There's about 10 people a week being killed because of the Turkey deal. And we're actually killing people with the EU policies. We're drowning them. You, you say they're going to protect them. 500 people died in one of the boats that you're talking about 10 days ago. Do you know why? Because of the Turkey deal. You're going to drive them across the Mediterranean. You're not going to stop them from coming. Putting up the borders, building 30-foot fences won't stop them from coming. This is crazy. No, you can talk away, Minister. I mean, I, you obviously don't listen anyway, even if you are looking at me, right? I mean... It's an absolute disgrace, yeah. actually. Your conduct is despicable. It really is. It's shocking. Please, please, can you proceed? Minister. Oh. Listen, as you know, we were over in Calais two weeks ago and in Dunkirk. And the smugglers in Calais and Dunkirk are the only people doing well, because they're doing really well. They're making more money now than they were six months ago, because it's getting more difficult to get in. But you know what? Most of them are actually going to get in anyway, into Britain. They're actually getting in there, but they're having to pay. Families are paying 20,000 sterling to get to Britain from Dunkirk and Calais. Where's the money come from? You know, where the God's name did they get the money? Well, they had they had their cousins and relations back home, big borrowing and stealing, in order to come up with the money for them. Now, God help them, I mean, thinking that they're, when they get to Britain that they're, they're in the promised land, or Ireland either for that matter. But that's, that's neither here nor there. But the smugglers are making a fortune. They've doubled their fees lately. Doubled them. The minimum for an individual is 8,000 sterling. 8,000 sterling? Most kids are still, are still chancing their arm with the trucks. They try and jump up between the cab and the trailer in the middle of the night in order to try and get up onto the roof or try to get into the back of it when the thing is moving. People are dying at it. We met so many young people. It's not funny. I mean, fuck, I don't, it's just too bad it is. I mean, we met so many Irish people over there working as volunteers who really care. And just, we met a fellow called Dylan Longman uh, and another fellow called Dave in Dunkirk. I mean, they're just giving up their whole lives in order to try and help people over there. Karen Minahan and Sinead and Barbara and Finton in, in, in Calais. There's a whole lot of Irish families that I'd like to help. There's, we were invited to dinner in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in a, a makeshift cabin in, in Calais by a fella called Khan. And there was nine guys there. They were all from Afghanistan. A couple of them told their story, but most of them said they couldn't because it was too upsetting. Most of them, the, 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 the age, the youngest was 14. The average was 16, 17. These are kids. I mean, could we... Could we adapt a policy that, maybe, can we do something around 
just minors even. Can Ireland become a champion of, of minors in, in the area of refugees? Could we, could we, could we go to Calais and Dunkirk and, and process some of these people and see, can we take them in? And there's Irish families. It won't cost the state a penny. There's Irish families prepared to take them in. I promise I'll take in one myself. I met a kid of 15. He lost all his family. His brothers and sisters and his mother and father on the, Af on the Iran Afghan border. He's 15. And he'd like to come to Ireland or Britain. We've often argued in here that, that Ireland has a great potential to play a very positive role as a neutral country in terms of what's happening in the world today, in terms of the militarization of the planet. But we have been so silent and complicit in the role that the US and France and Britain have played in the militarization of the planet. And you say, Minister, that we want to address the causes. We are so quiet about Palestine and the genocide that Israel is trying to carry out there. And somebody from the government should go to Calais, maybe they have, go to Dunkirk and see what's happening. There was a guy, the Afghans told us about a fella. He had to leave Afghanistan because one of his family had worked with the US Army, so the Taliban were after him. He spent six months in Calais, and mentally he just couldn't take it anymore. He went back, he turned himself in to the French authorities and they got him back to Afghanistan. He was dead in two weeks. Afghanistan now is controlled 50% by the Taliban, 50% by ISIS, and the government are a sideshow. This is not a country to be returning people to. Calais is dominated by Afghans, Dunkirk mostly Kurds. You know what? I would love to see those two nations welcomed in Ireland, the people that we met. They were such good people. These are not people that are looking for a free ride in any form. These people would like to work and make a new life in Ireland where they're not afraid of being killed. They're not terrorists. They're running from ISIS and the Taliban. There's, there is potential for Ireland to, take, to have a different approach. We can do things different. We can show that we care. And I believe that most Irish people do. But sadly, the approach of the government has been abysmal. I will plead with you to actually go to Dunkirk and Calais and set up a process where you can actually screen individuals, even if it's only all under 18. Just, let's just take minors. Oh, listen, we can't go wrong with it. And you'll find Irish families that are prepared to take them in. It will not be a burden on the state. They won't have to go through the difficult direct provisions process, which I, I, I had planned on talking about, but I'm not going to. Look at this is, we have, we are just absolutely blessed in Ireland with the opportunities we have here. We're not afraid of bombs falling on us at night when we're asleep. We're not afraid of where the next bit of food is going to come from, generally speaking. We're not dying of hunger here. I think, I mean, we seem to forget, I mean, these are not, these are not even economic migrants. But that's what all the Irish were that left here. They went everywhere. There's millions of Irish all over the planet. They were all economic migrants. Imagine if they were as unwelcomed 
as the Afghans and the Kurds and the Syrians were here. Let's look at that. Look at it again, please. Thanks. Thank you very much, Deputy Wallace. Deputy.